We strive for understanding of the lost civilization and indeed who they were, where they came from, and what the hell happened to them. The ancient Egyptians that we speak about are the dynastic Egyptians and they superseded a much earlier civilization. We know this through the dating of the structures in Egypt are far older than the hieroglyphics that are engraved upon such things. If you consider hieroglyphics as the written word of a civilization that survived the flood and found these pyramids and temples as they were, then you must also consider that there must be evidence somewhere of this earlier civilization, right? As we move forward in our understanding of these ancient enigmas, we will from time to time come across evidence that is hard to ignore, such as the stone boxes of Elephantine Island. When we look at this place, we see destruction. We also see things that were once precisely cut objects. What they were for is unknown, but it is examples like this and the boxes at the Serapium of Saqqara, to name a few, that must have a purpose. When we realize what the purpose of such things were, then we will begin to understand much clearly of the pre-flood empire. Anywho, some fresh info for you to digest today regarding Seti the First. Wait, till you hear this. It's probably notable to mention in modern times that we say SETI. Most of us immediately think of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, but of course there was once a warrior king of Egypt who is not regarded much in the history books, so we are going to enlighten you somewhat in this video. In the early years of his reign, SETI led his army northward to restore Egyptian prestige, which had been partly lost during the troubled years of the late 18th dynasty. He battled in northern Palestine and Syria and fought at least one battle with the Hittite king Mualtalis. He subsequently concluded a peace treaty that may have established the frontier at Kadesh on the Orontes River between the Lebanon and anti-Lebanon mountains. Seti did much to promote the prosperity of Egypt. He fortified the frontier, opened mines and quarries, dug wells, and rebuilt temples and shrines that had fallen into decay or been damaged, and he continued the work begun by his father on the construction of the great Hepostyle Hall, which is one of the most impressive monuments of Egyptian architecture. Another important work is his memorial temple at Abydos, which he dedicated to Osiris and six other deities, and decorated with reliefs of great delicacy, on which much of the original colors remains. Behind this temple is a curious building dedicated to Osiris. Seti's tomb is the first in the Valley of the Kings in Western Thebes. Although his son Ramses II is more famous, Seti is thought by many scholars to have been the greatest king of the 19th dynasty. If you consider the scale of restoration he ordered during his reign, then it is possible that Seti saved many pre-dynastic structures of this region from being lost to history completely. Newly discovered inscriptions of this pharaoh have been uncovered and it sheds some more light on this part of dynastic Egyptian history. The inscriptions have both drawings and hieroglyphics on them, and one of the inscriptions mentions an elite general in King Tut's army. Archaeologists with the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities discovered the inscriptions while conducting a groundwater lowering project in Aswan. They found them inside Kam Ambo, a temple dedicated to the god Horos, and a crocodile-headed god named Sobek. The temple dates back 3,300 years, and the inscriptions may have originally been in an earlier temple, now lost, at Kam Ambo, that was located on the same spot as the later temple. This is an exciting discovery and is historically important to this period in history. One of the inscriptions which still has yellow paint on it, despite the passage of 3,300 years of time, shows Seti I with images of the king worshipping Sobek and Horas, and it appears to date to early in Seti I's reign. This inscription proves that the double cult of these two gods, Horos and Sobek, was already established at Kam Ambo in the 19th dynasty of the New Kingdom period, more than a thousand years before the later temple was built. Another much larger inscription also appears to be in the name of Seti I and has an image that appears to show the king worshiping Horos and Sobek. This one is even more important historically. Archaeologists can't tell from the inscriptions precisely what the larger inscription says, 
but this was a major royal inscription and likely contained some kind of royal decree about the king's activities in the region. Perhaps a dedication to the temple of Haras and Sobek at Kam Ambo. It would be wonderful if the text of the larger inscription contains a report of the king's military activity. Said he came from a family of military generals, and after he became pharaoh, he launched military campaigns to conquer Libya, Canaan, Syria, and Nubia. The largest inscription mentions Horemheb, who was pharaoh until around 1293 BC, according to the statement. Aidan Dodson, an Egyptologist professor at the University of Bristol, could see at least one mention of Horemheb in the inscription. Horemheb was in fact the highest general in King Tut's army during Tut's reign. He became king by marrying into the royal family, and being head of the army probably also didn't hurt his chances of becoming pharaoh either. Why exactly Horemheb is mentioned in an inscription written in the name of Seti I is unclear. The inscription may be about completing some kind of building work begun by Horemheb and left unfinished at his death. We will leave it there for now, guys. We just wanted to bring you this nice little snippet of lost history, which we know you have enjoyed. Stay tuned for part four of our Elongated Skull series with Brian Forrester that is coming up just shortly. Just remember, guys, that the way by which we arrive at knowledge are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves. Thanks for watching.